life. Lindsay, you know that you're uh, that's your outback house. Come on, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I wish. It's like on my vision board as a dream cabin yeah. in the woods. Uh-huh. I will get there one day. Oh, Brad Mattern. Hey, hey. Brad, like you should probably be the one doing the buyer consult. Why? <laughs> he already has, I think. <laughs> he and Jessica did one a while back. There you go. No, it's your turn. Course, like usual. Thank you for pausing playing golf today, too. <laughs> yeah, because I'm playing golf in this weather. <laughs> oh, my God. And we've got about 10 days of this, guys, is what I hear. Yeah. I know. I just told Denton. It's like, um, I don't know if anybody was around at Family Reunion in 2012 when it was in Dallas and we had this like crazy ice storm. I'm like, oh, it was awful. Eight years yeah. ago. Yeah. I don't know I was going to host, um, and any of you are totally welcome to join. Uh, we as a team are getting together at my house on Tuesday to watch everything in Denton's house on Wednesday. Um, and I was going to host it on my patio. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm not. Go. <laughs> go get a couple of those heaters. Yes, yes, yes. All right, let's see how we're doing on time here. Where's my clock? We're going to give it two more minutes and then we're going to go ahead and start in and be respectful of everybody's time. Hi, Amy. Hi. While we're waiting, is everybody else doing okay today? Yeah. Don't all jump in at once. So Parker's going to be my buyer today, and I've strictly instructed him that this is not a class on objection handling. <laughs> he likes to throw me the curveballs. Yes, okay, yes. So going to just do too, a buyer's yeah. consultation. <laughs> Jessica does the same thing. It's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. All right. How many, what are we, what have we got on here? 16. There will be people that join us as we're in progress. Let me see who's on here. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you decide, Lindsay. You can wait another couple of minutes or you can jump in, whatever you would like to do. How about I jump in and give a quick introduction? Love uh, it. Then Parker and I will get started. So my name is Lindsay Knight. I am the Director of Sales for the DARE Network here in the Market Center. Um, we are back in a, I'm back here right now, we are back in a hole um, by Charlie Clark's office, if you know where that is, um, just down that hallway from the small conference room. We are all here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So if you ever want to listen to lead generation, you want to lead gen with us, you just want to stop in and say hello and ask a question, please feel free to come knock on our door. Um, it's kind of quiet around here. So I'm glad to see some of you are here at the office. Yay. I can't wait till we can be back in person. Anyways, um, what we're doing today is a live buyer consultation. So um, to give you a little bit of a backstory, I started with Denton. He was a single agent, if you know Denton of Guam, um, in 2012, and I came on as his buyer's agent. Um, I have now moved into a director of sales role, but I had Max just pull the other day um, for me. What? Oh, microphone. I had Max pull for me the other day my transactions, and I've been a part of 800 transactions as of last week. So um, that's fun. And I, I will say with the buyer consultation, you, you want to do one every single time. A buyer consultation is meant to set expectations early up front, especially in this market, um, so that as you get going, if you don't do one, you're going to be able to tell at different spots during the transaction um, where you didn't cover and set proper expectations. I tell our agents on the team as I coach them that um, there's emotions. Once there's a house, there's then emotions. And once there's emotions, anything you try to say then to set expectations, you sell like you sound like a salesperson. So I had somebody tell me once, you sound like a greasy used car salesman. And that was because I did not set proper expectations up front. Um, so that consult 
even if it's my mom, even if it's my brother, um, they're going to get a full fledged because you need them in this scenario to, to view you as the professional. They're going to get a full fledged sit down consultation with me where we're going to go over the whole process. Um, I utilize, if you've ever heard of the DISC method, um, the personality assessment, you need to understand it for two reasons when dealing with buyers and sellers, but let's call it buyers. Um, you need to understand what you are, because if you're working with somebody opposite of you, you need to understand how to flex to them. Um, and you need to also understand what your buyer is. So I'm going to go through this with you and show you. I take a binder like this on every buyer consultation. And as I sit down and start talking to them, I write up in the top corner of my page what I think they are right off the bat. That way, it reminds me through the whole process to communicate with them the way that they need to be communicated with. So if I'm talking to a high D, straight to the point. If I'm talking to a high I, they have to sign this buyer rep doc because they're going to tell me everything about their life, but they're hot and fast and they're going to move on really fast. Um, if, I'm, if I can't figure out what they are, they're probably an S. So I need to use words like safe and comfortable. If I'm talking to a C, um, they need details. And so I say things like, I want to make sure I give you all the details so that you feel comfortable and confident as we move forward. Got it? So we need to understand first who we're talking to. So um, I'm going to tell you really quick, just my outline. If you want to write this down for a buyer consult, um, if you want to jot some notes. Um, also, before I get started, I'm going to throw in the chat box. I have a Calendly link that if you ever want to have a confidential conversation, you want to have more of a one-on-one -on -one about this, you want to ask questions after this that maybe you're not comfortable asking in the group, um, feel free to jump on there. And I would absolutely love to chat with you one-on-one -on -one, um, more in depth about working with buyers or sellers. Um, but I, I hold two to three appointments a week for conversations like that. And so I'm going to just throw that in the chat box so you'll have it before we get started. So everybody grab a pen. And I talk really fast. Can we be okay with how fast I talk? Can y'all raise your hand or give me a thumbs up or something if you're good with how fast I talk? Okay, cool. Um, this is something I learned though. If I'm working with a C or an S, this is why I sound like a salesperson because I talk too fast. So I have to slow down when I'm talking to somebody that needs to feel comfortable, right? If I'm talking to a high D and I slow down, they think I'm stupid because I'm not talking fast enough. <laughs> Got it? Okay, so the outline of my buyer console, and then you'll hear it as I go about it. Um, we're going to start with Ford. So just write down Ford. It's how we're going to build rapport. We're going to go into a needs analysis next. Then we're going to go into market stats and strategies. Then we're going to go into the process. And then we're going to go into paperwork. Okay. So I let the person know this on the phone and I let the person know this when somebody says, why do we need to sit down? What do we need to talk about? I just want to meet at that house. Well, Mr. Buyer, I appreciate that. Um, and I want to make sure that we don't put the cart before the horse. I want to make sure that we actually sit down um, and we go through the full, full process. That way you feel comfortable when everything starts moving really quickly. So we're going to go through a full deep dive on a needs analysis of what's important to you and your family. We're going to go through what the market's doing. It's crazy, as I'm sure you've heard, but we're going to go through strategies of what we're doing that's going to allow us to win in this market. Um, and then I want to go through the process. That way, when it's moving fast, you easily know what's happening and what's coming next and you're not questioning and feeling out of control. Cool? And then they understand why we're gonna actually sit down. Okay, that was a lot of prep to get started. Are y'all ready to get started? Thumbs up? Yes? Cool. As you think of questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box and then when Parker and I finish, we'll circle back to your questions. Is that fair? Okay, cool. So, Parker, you ready? Ready. Fire consultation, not objection handling class. <laughs> okay, here we go. Parker, thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I am really excited to sit down with you. Parker, let's start here. Just tell me tell me about your family. Yeah, so I'm actually getting married this year. So that's really the reason why we're buying our house. Um, yeah, it's just me and her, me and Tara. And that's basically it. We have a little cat named Macy. And oh. uh, yeah, family lives around here and just looking forward to getting into a house. Super cool. And what do you and Tara do for work? Tell me about work. So we both are in accounting. Um, just got a job last year and uh, just with the, one of the big fours. Okay, cool. And then tell me about what you guys do for fun. What do you guys do on the weekend or when you have free time? So um, a few things that we like to do. We like to go to movies. Um, we like to take photos of, you know, nature, go on hiking, things like that. Um, that's probably the really the biggest things that we like to do. Awesome. Super cool. 
And tell me long term, is this a forever home that we're going to look at buying? Mm -hmm. Tell me kind Definitely. of dream for me. What's no, long term? Just, yeah, just probably for maybe five to six years, just a starter home, just okay. to kind of get our foot in the door and then hopefully buy our forever home, maybe build something like that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pause there. Y'all just saw me do Ford. Family, occupation, recreation, dreams. Okay, let's move on. Parker, so let's, I want you to dream for a minute. I want money to not be an issue here. I, I want to know um, what you picture. So we walk into that dream home. You have a picture in your head. I need you to do the best you can to explain to me what that feels like, what it looks like, as in-depth as you can possibly go with me. I want you to go there. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's that's a good point. I mean, I haven't really thought about it like that. Um, I mean, if money doesn't matter, I mean, preferably more than 3,000 square feet. I don't really like two stories. Um, it's just stairs are too much for me. Um, probably four bedroom, really open space, open kitchen to the living room. Would love to have a pool maybe on maybe over an acre, something like that. Um, I mean, obviously I can't afford that right now, but that's really what, what I'd like to have eventually. Tell me more. How many bathrooms do you need? Uh, I mean, that's not a big deal. Probably three, two and a half or three. What about living spaces? Do you need just one living room? Do you need a kid's space for in the next five to six years? Tell me about that. I mean, kid's space would probably be best. Um, not really right now. We don't need to. But I mean, if I were to dream, yeah, I mean, definitely have that kid's space. Um, I mean, one big living room is fine. And I do need to have a study now that you mention it um, since we both work from home. Awesome. Super yeah. cool. Okay. Tell me about dining rooms. How do you feel about a dining room? Do you just want a breakfast nook? Do you want the two? Don't care about dining rooms. They're old fashioned. What about garages? Two garage? Do you have a bunch of cars? Do you need three? Um, you have a bunch of junk? I mean, three would be great. I mean, I only have, we only have two cars now, but if I have an extra garage space, I might as well just get another car, right? Yep. Yeah. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you need a bunch of bikes for babies one day. Yeah. I mean, that could be another possibility. Tell me about um, school district. Do you have a school preference? Does that matter to you? I know you don't have kids now. Is that even something you're thinking about? No, it's not really something we're thinking about right now. I don't think school district is a big uh, deciding factor right now. But I mean, it would be a d good deciding factor if, you know, when we do decide to sell, um, you know, just having that selling point being in a school district might be a good option. Do you care about the age of the home? No, I mean, if it's, well kept and it's updated. I mean, that's really all I care about, you know, if it has good bones. What about your lot? Talk to me about lot, like backs to major road, doesn't back on a cul-de-sac, has a lot of trees, like any, any preference on the lot? Um, I mean, preferably not backing up to uh, a major, you know, road like Preston or something like that. I mean, if it was like in a cul-de-sac on a bigger lot, that would be great. Um, and not really on a busy throughway through a neighborhood. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's move into, I want to know your five must-haves. Like maybe, oh, you know what? I didn't get your price range from you. How much are we looking at here? Um, I, I haven't really spoken to a lender yet, but okay. I think we can probably afford up to maybe 350 Okay. Awesome. Okay. So tell me now five, the house must have these five things or we're not interested. Um, Definitely need an open layout. We'd love to have an op updated kitchen. Um, we don't really want to do all that work to it. Okay. Don't really like the front entry garage. Prefer to have an alleyway. Um, I mean, HOA, preferably not in an HOA. Okay. Um, what is that for? Mm -hmm. I guess a nice updated master bath would be definitely needed. Okay. Now let's flop that on you. Give me complete deal breakers. Like we pull up to the house and it has this. We don't even need to go in and look at it. Hmm. Um, I mean, definitely backing up to a major road. Okay. Um, if it's two stories, definitely no. Um, if it's under 3,000 square feet, definitely no. Um, that's three, two more. That front entry garage, I don't really like. And then trying to think. 
I mean, also that that major throughway through the neighborhood. I, I really don't want to be on one of those. On a busy street. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're going to pause there. We've just made it through the needs analysis. I utilized a sheet like this called a buyer information sheet, and it guides me through my questions that I'm asking. So whether on your phone call with them or in your actual consult, you want to make sure this whole thing is filled out. Um, when I do the must-haves or the deal breakers, that just gives me permission then that if they ask to go see a house that's two stories, because we all say buyers are liars, right? They can explain to you all day long what they want, but there's a feeling when they walk in the house. So if they say, if Parker calls me and says, I want to go look at this house and it's two stories, I have permission now without emotion to say, and originally when we talked, you said that was a deal breaker. Has something changed? Cool. Okay, Parker, thank you so much for sharing all of that. That is really great information so I can keep my eye on. Just to kind of give you a heads up, I'm going to set you up on a portal in the MLS. Um, I can control things like bedroom, bathroom, um, this and that. What I can't control is updated kitchen or updated master bathroom. I can't, unfortunately, our MLS doesn't have that technology yet. Um, so you may have to filter through some stuff that um, you don't love. But in there, you can hard it and I can see that. You can light bulb it and I can see that you can trash it. Um, so I can start getting a good idea of what you're liking. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. That would be great. While we're talking about the MLS portal, I just want to put this bug in your ear. Um, the MLS portal is going to be your most up-to-date way of looking at houses. I'm going to ask you very strongly to stay off of Realtor.com or Zillow or Redfin. Is that fair? And here's why. The yeah, market I mean, right now is, is moving so fast that... Um, those websites pull their data straight from the MLS, but sometimes it can get 24 to 48 hours delayed. And then if you send me the property after that, we've honestly already missed our opportunity. Also, they're really good about pulling the information from the MLS. They are really bad about pulling it off and putting it back. So if you start sending me stuff that you're not seeing in your portal, it's one or two things that's going on. Um, either A, we've got a criteria wrong in your portal and I want to fix that so you see everything that you're wanting to see. Or two, it's not available anymore. You shouldn't be seeing more inventory on Zillow or Realtor than you're seeing in your portal. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, I've been on Zillow before this, so that's good to know. Awesome. So pause there's an expectation right there for them so that you're not answering 9,000 questions about properties on Zillow. Okay, so Parker, what I wanna do next is I wanna move on to the market. I'm sure, tell me just a quick 20 second, like what have you heard about the market? I mean, based off the news, I've heard that there's like no houses on the market, which kind of scares me, but I mean, I know houses are selling. So at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, either way it kind of goes. So, I mean, I'm more than happy to, you know, jump on things super quickly, but I just know that homes are selling really fast right now. Yeah, you're exactly right. They are. Let's take a look at, um, I'm going to go over just some market statistics with you so that you can see actually on paper what's going on and see if it matches up. Let's see if it matches up with what you've heard. So I just okay. pulled these from Shout Out, my favorite title company, right, Brad? Um, and we are going to, um, we're just going to go through some numbers with you. Fair? Okay, so if you look here in Collin County, I pull where they're looking at. Average sales price between 2019 and 2020 is up in all categories um, from 200,000 all the way up to 500 plus. And our days on market, this is crazy, is actually in half. Actually in half from last year. So what this means is when you see a house come on the market, we need to jump out and go see it immediately. 24, 48 hours, we need to be in the door. Um, also, we look at months of supply of inventory in most areas right now. We're looking at like half a month of inventory, maybe one month of inventory. And what I mean by that, Parker, is, is in real estate, we call a balanced market six months of inventory, meaning if nothing else listed after today, it would take six months for it to sell. So that sounded really country. Um, so right now we have like two weeks to four weeks of inventory, just meaning we're in a really, really strong seller's market. I tell you that to not scare you. I tell you that just to set the correct expectation of timing. We can't drag our feet and we're going to have to be decisive when we get out and we get in the market. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Awesome. Um, so one thing that just strategy on how we kind of navigate this market, A, is that we get out quickly. Um, 
we're going to probably more than likely find ourselves in multiple offers. What I want to clarify there is multiple offers is not a bidding war. So I have a lot of buyers say to me, I don't want to get into a bidding war. Don't worry about that. That's not actually how it works. It's it's called multiple offers and, and the seller will ask for their highest and best. And so you and I are going to work together to come up with an offer and a number that makes sense for you that at the end of the day, um, if I call and tell you that you didn't win the house, we're going to put our best foot forward. And then I have to call and tell you that you didn't get the house. We're going to have hit a number that you're comfortable. You know what, Lindsay, I wouldn't have paid that dollar figure for it. So I'm okay that we lost it. Or if you tell me you're going to be upset, if I call and tell you that you didn't win the house, we're going to come up with a number that feels comfortable there. Um, that way you can win it. And we may have to get aggressive and there's more than just price. There's a whole bunch of terms in the contract. And I will go through those with you when we get to that point. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So I'm going to pause here for a minute. This is a big one right now that I'm seeing a lot of people really shoot themselves in the foot when they talk about the market. I personally was looking at a vacation home recently in another market and I got on and did a Zoom consult just like this with another agent and she scared me out of the market. And I see this all the time. Quit using language that is scaring the consumer out of the market. And here's why. If we're truly putting ourselves in their shoes, interest rates right now are insane. And so from a buyer's perspective, they need to be in the market. They need to capitalize both investors and buyers, everybody with their, their best interest in mind. They absolutely need to be in the market right now. And so don't scare them out of it, that it's too crazy. You need to be careful with your words here, that you're the professional that can navigate this market. And that's why they're hiring you to work with them. Cool. Fair mindset, two cents tip. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go through, now I take this folder that they're going to go with them. Okay, Parker, we're going to move on to the actual buying process. Um, and you're going to take this home with you today, just for y'all's sake. This has, I put listing information in here for our team. We've got a really sweet listing magazine that goes out that they can look at just in case they have something to sell. Um, and then I've got information on me as their agent that goes in here that our awesome ops team um, um, makes up for us. But really, I want to go through, I've got a home buyer's guide in here. And so, Parker, what I want to do is I want to go through this home buyer's guide with you. It's an extremely boring packet, and you can totally read it when you're asleep. But what I want to focus on is this back page. And this back page just goes through the process of buying a home with you. Is that fair? Um, yeah. And I'm happy to send this to you guys if you want it. So just drop in the chat your email address, and I'll grab those before we end the meeting. Is that cool? Um so the home buying process, here's what we're taking care of today, Parker. Today we're taking care of um, one and three. So we're going over what you need and you're selecting your realtor. Next step, Parker, is have you talked to a lender yet? No, I haven't. Um, I remember you mentioned that you had a few lenders that you like to work with. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind reaching out to them. I don't really have anyone that, you know, comes to mind. Okay, cool. So that's going to be your next step, honestly, in this process. Um, we're going to take care of one and three today. Your next step is going to be to call that lender. I'm going to send you a couple numbers and let me explain. Um, I have got my lender that I absolutely love and he is fantastic. He's going to be your Nordstrom of lenders. Okay. He's going to hold your hand. The customer service is going to be incredible, but he's going to be a little bit more expensive and that's okay. If you need that and you feel that it's who I personally use, cause I feel better about it. I'm also going to send you um, the target of lenders, which is a program It's called Keller Mortgage that we have to offer you here at Keller Williams. Um, it's going to be your cheap option, also good. And the service is actually pretty good. And I've compared them with my lender. I've compared them with under lenders and the, the um, savings that you get in buyer savings cost is absolutely amazing while their rates still remain low. So I'm going to give you both and I want you to decide who you want to use. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, how expensive do you think the, you said the norm, Nordstrom of your lenders, is it really expensive or is it just kind of like. Maybe like on the ones I've notated out, maybe $2,000 more in closing costs. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if they have good customer service, I think that would probably be better for me. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So once you take care of that, then our next thing is that we're going to move on and we're going to actually preview properties. We're going to get out in the market um, and start looking at houses after we look at houses, we're going to find a house that you like and we're going to write an offer. Um, no money is due because after we write the offer, we're going to negotiate the terms. And then you're going to hear me use the word that we're going to execute the offer. I want to notate the difference here. We can put out as many offers as you want and it doesn't cost you a dollar. OK, there's nothing scary about putting offers out there. Um, you're not going to owe any money until we actually execute an offer, which is down here. 
So what I want to notate down here is once you hear me use the words execute, that means all parties have agreed on all terms and there's going to be four checks that are due pretty quickly. I want to tell you about those checks now so that when I start asking you for thousands of dollars, you're not caught off guard. So the first one is going to be your option period check. That's going to buy you the first seven to 10 days of the contract to back out for any reason you want. You can wake up and call me and say, Lindsay, I'm freaking out. I don't want to do this. Back me out. Cool. That's what that first seven to 10 days is for. Um, it's going to be a hundred dollars. 100 to 200, depending on multiple offers right now. If for some reason you do back out, the seller is going to retain that money. If you close on the property, that money is, is yours. It's going to be a credit to you at closing. The second check is your earnest money check. This is going to be a deposit for you to the title company. The title company is going to cash it and they're going to hold it in an escrow account for you. When you close on the property, you're going to get this money back also. This is typically 1% of the price of the home. So for buying a $300,000 home, it's going to be $3,000. Fair. I want to tell you on this money, because it's a lot of money, that I'm going to protect it for you in the contract for around 18 days. I've only had two buyers in eight years that have actually ever lost that money. And that's because they woke up a few days before closing and decided they couldn't do that. And in that case, the seller is going to retain that money. Cool. The third Thank check you. is going to be your inspection fee. It's going to be around $500. We're going to pay a third party to come in and inspect the property. We're paying them to find every possible thing wrong with the house. That's what we want them to do, okay? during We're going to do this during that 7 to 10 days, that option period, and then we're going to negotiate with the seller for repairs on what they're going to fix for you. I want to notate here that we're going to focus on the big five first. We're going to focus on your roof, your foundation, your electrical, your plumbing, and your termites. Um, and then as long as all of those are functioning properly, we're going to look at other items that aren't functioning, like maybe the oven needs to be calibrated or the sprinkler system isn't working. What we're not going to focus on is cosmetic items. We are not going to ask the seller to change light bulbs or stretch the carpet. Deal? Deal. Yeah. Okay, awesome. We want to keep this list to around five to seven items. Um, and then we're going to go to the seller to make sure that the house is functioning properly for you. Sound good? Sounds good. I'm going to pause right there. That is a giant expectation that you have to set with a buyer up front. This is the biggest one where you will have deals fall apart in this market because they've been so aggressive to get the house and then the house actually has problems and they get really emotional that the seller isn't going to fix them because the seller has 20 other offers <laughs> that they can deal with, right? And so the seller also feels like they get bait and switched because your client was so aggressive up front and then they're going to send a laundry list. So to hold your deals together, you want to make sure that you set this proper expectation up front with your buyers on how many items you're going to ask for and what type of items you're going to ask for. They will have all the anger towards you if you try to say this once you're in that process already, because now there's a house attached and there's emotions. Got it? Okay, back on. Um, Parker, the fourth check is going to be your appraisal check. Um, it's going to be also around $500 and your lender is going to hire a third party to come in and verify that the house is worth what we're offering to pay. This is to protect you to make sure that um, you're not overpaying for the home. Any okay. questions on that so far? Yeah. So I, I don't hire the appraiser that my lender will just do that. Mm -hmm. Your lender will hire them. Okay. Cool. Okay. So moving on. Oh, I've got this upside down for y'all. We're down here. You've got your four checks. Now, uh, Parker, we're going to go into this period right here. It's about your 30 day window while you're under contract. The only thing I want to notate here is that there is 15, 20 people at work behind the scenes for you. Um, so the title company is going to be working really hard to make sure that you're getting clean title, that there's no past HOA dues on the house. There's no liens, nothing like that. There's no old siblings that have passed away. that are going to, come, going to come try to claim the property. Um, and then your lender also is going to be requesting hundreds of docs from you. It's probably the most annoying part of the process. And I'm sorry, just expect it. They're going to ask you for all the documents all day long. Um, and then we're going to move up here. Up here, it says obtain funds for closing. I want to notate this because 72 hours before closing, your lender is going to re-verify your em employment and re-verify um, your money. They're going to basically re-approve you. So I want to tell you here, don't quit your job. Don't go buy a car. Don't take out any extra debt. Don't go start buying stuff at the house and putting it on a credit card because I actually have had a buyer before that three days before no longer approved for their home. Deal? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, deal. I won't do that. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to come down here. We're going to close on the property and then we're going to take possession. And I've got those separated here because you're going to go to the title company. You're going to sign all the documents and then you're not going to actually get to take possession of your home. Could be a few hours. It could be the next day. So I just tell you that to tell you to not bring a moving truck to closing because you may not get the keys immediately. Fair? 
that's fair. And just like that, Parker, you have bought a house. Do you have any questions so far? No, I mean, it's a lot of stuff and I, I know you'll take me along with the process, but yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go look. Awesome. So our next step today is to just do, we've got a little bit of paperwork that's going to officially hire me and put me to work for you. Um, so let's just move right into that. Laura, do you want me to go into the paperwork? I'm on mute. Sorry. Yes. Go okay. just briefly outline what you do and how you present it. Okay, we've cool. got time. Thank you. Okay, cool. So Parker, we're just going to do a little bit of paperwork that officially puts me to work. So this first page is the information about brokerage services page. Um, this is just a disclosure. It doesn't like officially hire me or anything. I just have to tell you as a buyer that you have the right to be represented. Cool. I need your initials cool. at the bottom. Then I have a vendor disclosure. All this states is that I may refer you vendors in the process like a roofer or a plumber. It's just simply people that I know in the industry. You do not have to use them. But also, if you do use them, you don't hold me liable for them. Cool. Okay. Um, there is also a wire scam fraud notification that I want to make you aware of. Um, if you ever get um, wiring a wiring instruction request from a title company, um, don't send it via email. Pick up the phone and call and make sure it's actually them. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to move on to the document that actually hires me. Um, this is the buyer representation agreement, and it just states that you are in a relationship with me. Um, I do put an area on here. I put the counties around Dallas because I love you, Parker. But if you go to buy a house in the Austin area, I'm not going to drive three hours to show you houses. Is that fair? Yeah, I guess that's fair. Okay, cool. I do put a term down here. It's a six month term. I want to notate here that um, if for some reason during the process you're unhappy, I want you to tell me because I want to be able to make it right. Um, but also if you're unhappy and you want to fire me, I'm probably unhappy also and probably want to fire you too. Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. Okay, cool. So let's just get some initials down here. The next page, um, I have checked here intermediary status. All intermediary status means is that um, I am under um, the Keller Williams Plano brokerage. There's almost 400 agents there. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of listings that are listed by my associates in my office. Checking this means you would be interested in seeing houses listed by them. I, If I'm representing you as a buyer, I cannot also represent the seller. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. On the back page, it states here that I am going to earn um, 3% of the price of your home that is paid by the seller. It's not paid by you. And that is all on this page. The next page states that I get paid in Collin County because that's where my license is held. It states that we'll go to mediation if anything goes wrong. Um, down here in addenda, I presented you with that information about brokerage services telling you that you have the right to be represented. So now you have to sign again that I told you that. Um, and then also sign again that I gave you the wire transfer fraud notification thing. And then on this last page, this is what I like to call like the iTunes agreement. It's something that's happened to somebody at some point in time. Um, feel free to review it if you need. It's also just the page that I need your full signature. Okay. And that is all. Any questions that I can answer for you guys? I know I talked fast. Thank you for letting me talk fast. I hope it kept you on your toes. Any clarification? Hi, Lindsay. Thank you. This is uh, Trevor. Hi. Hi, Trevor. Hi. Is there a way to do a search on MLS for like, um, I thought there was a way to do like updated kitchen. So like anywhere in the description, maybe it'll say updated kitchen. If you put like maybe asterisks by it or something like that, can you do that? I don't think so. Okay. I think um, KW with our command or with our new app has technology coming that you could click on like a white kitchen and it would filter out white kitchens for you. But I don't think with MLS that there's a way. Okay. That's correct. You okay. also have to rely on the listing agent to put that information in there to begin with. And yeah. most of the time they probably won't. So okay. true. So Lindsay, that did not really sound like a script at all. That was pretty amazing the way you flow through it. So tell us how long did it take you before you got that down? Oh, um, uh, my first year in the business when I was just doing buyers with Denton, um, I did the buyer console every chance I got. So if I was on the phone with anybody and I heard an in, I closed for the deal. Now I found myself or I closed for the meeting. That was my thing was if you look across the lead metric to lab metric type thing. So conversations to appointments, appointments to reps, reps to pendings. 
my first year in the business, I was focused on the lead metrics. And so if I could just get anybody to sit down with me, I went for it. So I found myself sitting down with a lot of people that didn't have jobs. And I would get into this buyer consult and be like, cool, you don't have a job. I can't buy a house. It's a waste of my time. But it was good practice. So I would say probably a good six months to where I got to a place that a buyer wanted to meet and I didn't feel nervous or like I needed to prepare. I, it just through. Perfect. We had a That's question. Good. Could you share your, would you be willing to share your needs assessment form? I think that's the one that we've already put our name in here for. Yes. Yes. I'm happy to okay. share the information Perfect. with you. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys, this is your chance to ask one of the top people, what would you like to know about her presentation? Parker was really nice. He didn't throw a lot of objections her way, but he was very sincere too. He was very nice. So, Lindsay, what about yeah. if you meet with someone who is unwilling to sign a buyer's rep agreement? Awesome. So that is a really good question because that's reality, correct? So a couple of things here. Number one, you have a business decision to make. You own your business and you can decide to go show them houses before they've signed that or not. Okay. Know that you are going to get kicked in the teeth at some point if you don't get that buyer up signed and you go show them houses. It happened to one of my team members last week. He's been in the business for seven years. He sells like 70 something houses a year and he had a $1.65 million buyer that he got a little um, confident in and he didn't have them sign a buyer's rep and they bought a house to someone else. You take on that risk when you don't have them sign. Your business, you decide. I will tell you in my first year to two years in the business, Denton told me, you have everybody somebody sign it or you do not show them houses. And I am a rule follower. So I did not um, question him. I went back to this process every time. I set that expectation in the consult that we were taking care of selecting our real estate agent and analyzing your needs now. Um, their next step was to find, get a pre-approval before we went and looked at houses. So if they didn't sign, they didn't select their real estate agent that day. So I always went back to not a problem when you're ready to start looking at houses, we'll take care of that. So the first time they asked me to look at a house, I had an open door and an expectation to send that. Make thank sense? You. Yeah. Does that thank answer you. your question? Yeah. Thank you. Parker, do you want to give them the not signing objection? Yep, I can do that. Go ahead. Uh, you know what, Lindsay, I kind of want to think it over. Um, I mean, I've kind of talked to some other agents, but not as serious as you. I just kind of want to think about it. Okay, do you mind me asking what you want to think about? What concerns you about signing today? Uh, I mean, I just don't want to get into an agreement uh, as of right now. Um, I mean, if that's normal, I'm totally fine with doing that. I just kind of want to think it over and just make sure I'm doing everything right. Okay. Tell me more about getting into the agreement. Um, I, I mean, all I probably need to do is read through it. I mean, I like to read all the contracts that I sign and we kind of went over it kind of quickly. Um, yeah. so that's really the only thing I want to do. Okay, cool. Let's do this. If that's fair with you is let's go ahead and sign it today. And just because we're here, that way we don't have to come back to this and sit down again. And then what I'll do is I'll actually send it home with you. You can review it and read it to your heart's content. And when you're ready to move forward, you can just send, send it back to me. Is that fair? Yeah. I mean, that, that definitely works. Um, yeah. I just want to read through it. That's basically it. Cool. That works. So you always want to get them to sign right there if you can. A lot of times it's just like, Parker, it's just a fear of signing something. Um, I will tell you in mine, when I use the whole script of the... Um, the, the term, the six months, is um, when I do the whole, like, if you're unhappy, please tell me so that I can fix it. Also, if you're really unhappy, I'm also unhappy, and we'll just rip this up. I'm not going to hold your hands behind your back and make you buy a house with me. And that always makes them laugh and kind of loosens that. Because let's be honest, if you have a miserable client, you're miserable too. And I don't want to work with you anymore. It's not worth my brain space to keep working with somebody. Am I right, Brad? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's healthy sometimes to fire the client for your own well-being. It is so liberating. And you can go backwards. You need to have enough clients that you can have that liberating feeling and be able to fire somebody because it's not worth your brain space to have to work with everybody. Because it's uh, your time. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Brad. I was just going to say, I mean, it, your time is important too. Mm -hmm. I have to like jump in on, on Lindsay's presentation, but 
You're right. Um, it's, yeah, it's very important. You, you have to respect your time and you have to have your clients, like that's why it's so important to set the expectations first and, and let them know what your availability is. Yeah, amen. What other questions do you have? How many buyer consultations do you strive for a week? What are your goals? I um, don't work with that many buyers anymore um, because I have a different role on the team now with the agents. Um, but I still do a healthy amount of, I do 30 units a year. So 15 of those are buyers. And what about for your buyers? Do they have expectations and goals? My agents? Yeah. Parker, do you want to talk about your numbers? Yeah. I try to set two buyer's appointments a week. That's my lead metric. And that's based on how many contacts I make and how many appointments I can set from those contacts. So our agents range from goals of 24 units a year up to 75 units a year. Um, so it depends on what, what their goal is. Yeah. And my goal is 28 or I think it's 28. What else? Some of you are really quiet. I want to see your faces. Show me your face. I want to know all of you. I don't know all of you. Come on, be brave. Lindsay, if we have time, they can introduce themselves. Just go across yes. your screen and ask them to introduce themselves. We've okay. got the time. Lincoln, introduce yourself to me. We have people hanging up. They're like, I don't want to introduce myself to you. Okay, Joe. I was on mute. Oh, sorry, Lincoln. Tell us, say hello. Hello, guys. Lincoln Haig, been with the uh, Keller Plano office uh, for about two and a half years, going on to three years. Awesome. Um, actually, I love your presentation. Thank you. I love your accent. You make it sound <laughs> so simple. <laughs> Buying a house is simple. Everybody's objections are the same, ultimately. Joe, tell us about you. Joe Flores, I uh, have been in the office for 10 years already. I remember when Lindsay had just joined Denton. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I always tell Denton when I grow up, I want to be just like him. <laughs> you are more than that, Joe. <laughs> You are already more than that. You don't want to strive to be like Denton. You'll just end up not having hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun. And, and working with buyers is, is a lot of fun. It is. But, uh, you know, we all have to find that balance of having a balanced business. And the ideal is to have a 60% sellers, 40% buyers balance. Yes. You know, what I strive for, you know, every year, year in and year out. So keep that in mind. Yes. Um, Joe, number two, do you want to introduce yourself to us? Yes, uh, my name is Joe Gencher, and I uh, I was actually a realtor in California for about 10 years. Oh, awesome. Before I moved out here to Texas, and I just got restarted uh, just a little bit, a bit ago. And, uh, Super cool. Haven't Brad? been able to get in the office. <laughs> well, I can't wait till you can come back. Old Brad Mattern, everybody knows you, right, Brad? I guess so. Uh, I'm Brad Mattern with the Mattern team. I've been with KW Plano going on three years now. Seems like just yesterday. Um, but I, I'm the primary buyer's agent for our team. And then uh, we just brought on Heather Taylor to our team full time, and she's our full time buyer's agent as well. Hey, Taylor. Hi, Heather. Did you say Taylor or Heather? Heather Taylor. Heather Taylor. Hi, Heather. Hi. Nice Welcome. So if you come in the far side of the office on the, or on the north side, we're, we got relegated to the cubicle yeah. or the little cubby hole over in the corner. We got kicked out of the office. So I love those cubicles. <laughs> cute. We're in time now. Yeah. This, <laughs> so. Okay, let's do Bradley number two or Brad number two, which is Bradley. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm Bradley Furlong. Uh, I'm a relatively new agent um got my license last year and um just trying to get up and starting and rocking and rolling awesome well you're in the right place let's see dionica right 
She's silenced. Charles. Dionica told me she's got a, a buyer that just called her. She's on, but she'll unmute herself when she's finished. Very cool. The infamous Charles. I'm going to defer to one of the newer agents, Lindsay, like Sandra Childs, Amaka, Raina. Uh, okay. Cesarisa, Molly yeah. Irwin. Molly, introduce yourself. Everybody knows Charles. Hey, Molly. Hey, Molly, I've been with um, Keller Williams since, I guess, the first week of December. Oh, awesome. I'm a very new agent. Well, welcome. Getting in all the knowledge. Mm -hmm. all right, well, we're glad you're here. Thank you. Um, Hi, everyone. It's, it's Sandra Childs. I, too, am a new agent. Um, I've been with Keller Williams since mid-November, and um, I really enjoyed your presentation. I made a lot of notes. Good. Good. I hope it was helpful. Who else Hello. do you have? Hello, my name is Amaka. Thank you, Charles, for calling us out, the newbies. <laughs> I have been with Keller Williams um, right along with Molly since like the first week of December, I would say. And I really enjoyed your presentation. I'm going to need a recording because I'm someone who has to, like, I can't really take notes and like really memorize um, what I'm supposed to actually be retaining. <laughs> Laura, this is being recorded, right? Yes, I noticed that it was being recorded. Yeah. And now, that is a question. Are, are, can, can we have access to the recording? I'm sure you oh, good question. We'll have to find that out. If we do it, typically we post it on the YouTube channel if we have it. Um, so I will find out and I will get back with everybody. So. And I mentioned this yep. at the beginning. Um, I am happy to go further in depth with anybody that wants to. Um, if you scroll up to the top of the chat, I put my Calendly link in there and I... I reserve two to three meetings a week um, to strategize with agents. So it's like a quick 20, 30 minutes. So if you want to go in depth about your business or anything like that, happy to chat with you. Thank you, Lindsay. You're welcome. Who else do we have? Raina, Ebony? And Sarissa, it looks like. Rana, can you unmute yourself? Are you able? It's always hard if you're on your cell phone. Hello, this is Dionica. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hello. I've been with KW for two and a half years now. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> awesome. Good. Good, good. What about Ebony? Anybody else? And I noticed Pierce hey. is on here. There she is. Hey, this is Ebony Ross. I've been with KW for a um, year now, a little over a year. Um, Lindsay, a great presentation. I'm glad I joined and I just wanted to say I really enjoyed it. Good. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad somebody enjoyed it. I recorded <laughs> my, um, this buyer consultation. So Laura's going to send you this one. I recorded it for the team. How long ago was that Parker? Maybe two, three years ago. It was the first time I realized I look like a complete B word on camera. And I never had a smile on my face. And people now, like when they come to train, they watch it and they're like, you're so serious. <laughs> so Have I'm fun with it. It looks like you enjoy your job when you do this. I do enjoy my job a lot. And I love working with buyers. They're happy. They're actually the happy. Well, right now, sellers are really happy. Let's be honest. <laughs> if that's not a normal market. That is not all the time. Sellers are normally the harder one. Any last questions before we part? Anybody need to know anything? Pierce, you've been amazingly quiet on this. Do you have any questions? Oh, Lindsay did a super job. Thank you, Pierce. Agreed. Anybody else? This is it. This is your chance. Hey, Lindsay, I will say this. In your presentation, I think you made it very conversational. Mm -hmm. um, you did ask a lot of questions, which are great. You paused for the question. So I think for all of us to really hear how she made it conversational is the most important thing to walk away with, in addition to all of the content. Yeah, I would say at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, it's a system that I take them through. And I still, to this day, I write it out in my book. And so we can get as conversational as we want and we can go off a deep end about anything. 
and I just know where I'm moving to next. And as soon as I get like a pause, I can move where I need to go next. And so they say, right, with any script, like if you practice it enough, you can actually start listening to what the other person is saying because you know where you need to go. You're not just waiting for them to stop talking so you can keep getting your script out. So would you say the systems have allowed you to scale up your business significantly as you put these steps in place? Because you don't have to think about it. You just do it over and over and over. So yes, and I will tell you all this only to prove a point in my first year. And this is the beauty of when you don't know any better, um, you don't know any different. And in my first year, at one point I was complaining to Denton that I was really overwhelmed. And so we went to my buyer pipeline and I had 47 buyer reps signed because I didn't know any different. I just did the consult and signed the rep and did the consult and signed the rep. Even if I thought they're never buying a house, they don't have money. They don't have a job. I just kept getting the reps signed and eventually enough people actually bought a house. You just, well, I think everybody on this call would love to have 47 people in their pipeline. You may cry, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, it gives you options. It does give you options. And then you have the ability to fire people that you didn't want to work with. It also just made it, it's not emotional. It just is. Just get them to sign the rep. Very cool. I'm applying it now to a different aspect of my business. I'm a health coach now also on the side, just as a passion project, but I'm applying the same principle. And now I do health assessment calls and it's the same thing. Like just, you just, it's a system and you don't have to think about it. You don't have to be emotional about it. You don't, it's a system and you get to help a lot of people in the process while still maintaining your energy. Well, Lindsay, we appreciate you and Parker. Um, I hope you don't get overwhelmed by people reaching out, but I have a feeling they will. And I'm going to share your email with everybody again. Right. Um, so not with you guys. Awesome. Hey, listen, That's thank you so much. Anything else, guys? We're going to call going, going, gone if there's no other questions. I know some people have to jump off. Okie dokie. Lindsay, thank you again. We appreciate your time. Out. Yep. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Parker. Welcome, Lindsay.